Hello everyone, once again welcome to my IIT channel. So today's video is related to exam oriented uh, students. So those who are going to attend exam, I hope this video will be helpful. So uh, first I will start with the writing. So when, uh, when you are going to write the letter, just keep three things in your mind. So I want to tell you four things. The first three things are related to uh, present medical paragraph. So there are some different types of uh, questions in this 2022 and this is going to be uh, a twisting questions. So almost uh, you will get some confusion somewhere when you are writing the present medical paragraph. One question it is related to multiple cases. If you have multiple cases like uh, two cases example like Parkinson's disease and depression. So it is some some um, a May, sometime it may be related sometime these questions or conditions may be irrelated something it's happened before the admission something may happen it's during the hospitalization whatever if you have uh, two case not that two diagnosis if you are to write it in introduction keep it in your mind make two paragraph in present medical paragraph that pa medical paragraph can be divided into two in the first paragraph you can mention about one disease condition and the cause how it's happened and what is the management you have given and what is the current situation and next paragraph you can write about the next condition and in that second paragraph at the end you can just give a sum what is the overall status of the patient so like that we can sum up in that situation another one if you have um uh, like um, known case if you have known case letter and uh, there are some old history they have given and uh, it's uh, followed by home visit so how we can write always in present medical paragraph the first paragraph make some stories from the starting when the condition has started you can start from there then you can come to the second paragraph in the second paragraph you can just start with the home visit so what you have to do in the ending end of the present uh, the first present medical paragraph you have to mention why this home visit has been arranged and in the next paragraph you can write all related to home visits at the end of that paragraph you can write what is the current status and why you are requesting the letter it is like a simple sum, sum up so that is the second one and another one more thing it is related to urgent letter so if you want to write urgent letter always according to the updates uh, always start with the today's case that means today's what today what happened so when you are writing today today what happened mostly it will be home visit so you can just start with how the home visit or for what the home visit has um, initiated under your nursing service then you can tell that is only one sentence then you can continue with today's incident what are the things it's happened then at next paragraph you can just start with the old history if there is like old history means start with initially okay initially these are all the things happen and at the end of this paragraph you can just come to home visit therefore um, he has been arranged with our home visit so these are all the three things i want to tell you regarding the present medical paragraph then the fourth one i just want to tell you regarding the introduction so introduction means mostly you will not get confusion but in some cases uh, there will be two conditions so that is the thing you will get um, confused whether we have to write two conditions or it will be only one so like that so always see the recommendation it will be easy for you to find out in the recommendation just you can see what all the recommendations are given example if it is related to two conditions that means you have to write the two conditions in the introduction if it is related to only one so mostly the um, present medical the present medical paragraph itself we can uh, give the importance for other conditions but presently currently to um, i mean uh, what all the conditions are there for the patient still we need some assistance so according to that try to make the introduction paragraph so in introduction paragraph don't write always the diagnosis sometime diagnosis they will give and the surgery also so no need to write the diagnosis there you have to write the patient is recovering or recuperating from that surgical procedure so always keep it in your mind in the introduction you are going to write recent present condition not always the diagnosis sometimes it can be the diagnosis but most of the time it will be like recuperating recovering or has been diagnosed or sometime only can use has and all and sometimes you, you may get uh, confusion whether you have to use has been or you have to use uh, you have to use was diagnosed has been diagnosed means for the reason uh, recently if it is diagnosed you can write has been diagnosed with if it is very old condition you can just write was diagnosed and then one more thing i want to explain you that is important point in present medical paragraph example there is one condition but it is like exab exacerbated condition or worsening but this condition is already there for many years 
and patient is on medication or treatment how we can start always start in the present medical paragraph with the has had example mr x has had chronic obstructive pulmonary disease since 2016 and joined this medication but today what happened today also patient has the same problem but it is like exacerbation of copd or infective copd so something it can happen alzheimer's disease or parkinson disease or can be hypertension diabetic or whatever like a chronic condition renal failure also so some, something is happening like a worsened um, version that is today's case not means always that pa the past history you have to write it in the present medical paragraph it has had okay mr x has had this condition since this year and he is on this medication and start with then again continue with recently recently on this date patient presented with this 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 so on like that you can sum up so these are all the things it is related to writing so i hope this video is uh, helpful for you i will make another one video for speaking don't miss that one also i will come back with that one until then bye take care Hello everyone, once again welcome to my OIT channel. So today's video it is regarding OIT speaking. So how you have to prepare your mind for the exam. So those who all are preparing for your exam in the last moment, I hope this video will be helpful for you. So if you want to get B score in speaking, there are some criteria you have to keep it in your mind. First of all, we have some set of um, uh, role play cards which will be fixed for all exam. That means we have um, speaking cards for community health center in that the the topic will be mostly regarding vaccinations or uh, mother is coming or parent any mother or father coming to the clinic to get some information regarding baby's problem or uh, like regarding parents children are they are coming son or daughter is coming to you uh, they will ask you some uh, concern regarding their parents problem so these are the things it will come under the community health center so it can be non case or unknown case so what do you mean by non case and unknown case in speaking so some of the students until now they don't have any idea about this one so i will tell you regarding the noun case mean you can read the note before the writing i mean before the uh, task the speaking task there will be one scenario like a note they used to give don't skip that note if you will skip you will not get exactly the introduction for your role play or else you will not get exactly the content of the role play they will give you a clear idea so what is your role and who is uh, in front of you and uh, main thing you have to see you have just examined so the the phrase if it is there means that means this is a non scenario that means already you have started your conversation and it is in the uh, on the way of conversation in before that you have just examined patient's body part maybe eye or face or injury part wound part or ear or something like that so that means no need for your self <clears throat> introduction there what you have to do you have to ask their name during 3 minute preparation time don't wait for them to uh, tell to start a conversation just if you find out this is a non case miss you can just ask them how may i address you during the role play and write a name on the paper so they they will provide you the question paper you can write it over whatever you want you can write it over the paper but you have to give it back them so you can just write the patient's name sometimes uh, this is mother and baby maybe baby is not present maybe is not present if it's given like that means no need to ask baby's name just but just you have to confirm baby whether baby is baby boy or girl because you have to mention him or her in during your conversation and uh, another one more thing if baby is present means you can ask uh, a patient's name and baby's name during the conversation not before during the conversation if it is given you have just examined the baby means you have to ask mother name and baby's name because it is very easy for for the introduction example if the baby is there you have just examined baby's leg something happened uh, so you have to start the introduction how we can start during 3 minute preparation time you have to ask parent name and baby's name example parent name is john baby's name is tom so how we can start well um, uh, mr john thank you for allowing me examine your baby's leg so that is introduction then you can straight away start the task 
so this is the way how you have to handle known case and unknown case so this scenario mostly it will be there in community health center or sometime it will be there in uh, emergency department also then another one more thing it is a hospital in hospital you have different uh, variety of uh, role plays but uh, you can just uh, think that one it is admission maybe hospitalization hospital means of course it is like during hospitalization only so you know the patient you know regarding the patient patient's name everything condition everything you you know so what you have to do during treatment preparation time you have to just ask patient's name and in the introduction you can just self introduce and but you should not ask patient's name because it's already hospitalized patient example good morning mr john i am rashmi rajan one of the research nurses working in this hospital ward how are you feeling now so like that in casual way you can continue the conversation another one more thing uh, it's like um, newly admitted patient example newly admitted patient and if you want to give some uh, uh, like um, any you, if you want to give injection or something like invasive procedure means you need to confirm whether this is the patient from your prescription chart or something so what you can ask you can ask for the confirmation purpose may i ask your full name and age or date of birth something like that you can ask but don't ask that uh how may uh, how may address you or what is your name like that no it should be for the confirmation purpose may I ask you a full name or could you please tell me your full name and date of birth or age or something like that we can ask so mostly hospitalization you will get especially for discharge discussion so discharge discussion means maybe patient is going to be discharged so it is the end of the hospitalization so you can just start uh, the conversation same in that way and uh, in this conversation at the end at the end of the conversation how you can conclude means you can ask do you have any concern so if patient is telling that i know i don't have any concerns so still everything is clear then you can tell uh, yes uh, mr john i hope i have clarified all your doubts if you don't have any other clarifications may i proceed with your discharge process so that is our conclusion no need to tell if you need anything please press the um, uh, bell or buzzer no need there because this is discharge next you are going to discharge the patient but if it is the not discharge it is like a normal uh, scenario means you can end up in it that uh, okay uh, well mr john thank you for um, um not thank you for um uh, something according to the role play card the ending will be something thank you for uh, accepting my advices or um, thank you for your informations or uh, you can just inform that i hope i have clarified all your doubts if you need any assistance please press the bell call bell i will come and assist you this is for normal patient and even in hospitalization you will get um, parent conversation parent conversation also can be two types baby is present baby is not present baby is present inside the medical ward okay it is not the clinic hospitalization baby is already got admitted you are talking to the parent if it is baby is not present means mother is outside or father is outside of room so you don't know regarding uh, the pa uh, parent whether they are parent of this patient or no you don't know so what you have to do during conversation at the introduction you have to start if i am not wrong is it example baby's name you have to ask supposed to be asked so what you have to do in 3 minute preparation time you have to ask baby's name that means your patient name example baby's name is rose so how we can start you don't know mother mother is standing outside so you can ask like this good morning you can just introduce yourself my myself rashmi rajan one of the registered nurses working in this hospital ward if i am not wrong um uh, is it um, uh, baby um, rose mother like that we can ask then um, mother is telling that yes i am then you can uh ask them how may i address you then you can continue the conversation in another scenario baby is present and you are talking to the parent inside the ward so that means you don't have any confusion regarding the patient but maybe you don't know baby parent's name so in this scenario also you have to just ask uh, during the treatment preparation time you can just ask uh, baby's name even you can um, ask mother name also because it is hospitalization maybe you will be familiar with the mother also so like that also it's like optional you can use but if baby is not present means you are not confirmed with the mother so you have to ask their name during conversation only but mother baby's name should be asked in the 
three minute preparation time. So that is another one scenario. Then another one scenario is vaccination. You may get vaccination for adult or vaccination for babies. So vaccination for babies means you are talking to the parent uh, and you, you don't know regarding their uh, histories and all. So uh, like a normal way, you can just start talking. And adult vaccination also is like that only there. Uh, so both in immunization, there will be more concern regarding the side effects. So there you have to give more um, reassurance. So that is the thing. In this scenario, at the end of the conversation, the conclusion should be, if you don't have any other clarification, just you can start like this. I hope I have clarified all your doubts. Then if you don't have any other questions, may I proceed with the vaccination? So that's enough because you are going to give the injection. No need any other conclusion. Sometimes parent uh, will come to you just to get an idea about uh, the vaccination. In fact, scenario, it's okay, fine, you can talk. You can tell like this, thank you for visiting us. And if you need any other information, please don't hesitate to contact with, with us. This is the contact number of our clinic like that you can sum up. So according to the scenario, the introduction and the conclusion will be very. Then the totally different uh, role play card is home visit. How much it means, of course, uh, there it will be like a starting, it can be two types, either one, it will be like a <coughs> newly you are going to the home, another one scenario, it's like a known case, or uh, you have just examined a patient like that also. So if it is unknown means, like you didn't start the conversation, means always start with the greetings, good morning. Wait for them, whatever the role play, just, uh, I, I could see that some of my students, they are doing like that only, that's why I'm just um, sharing with you. After greeting, stop your conversation, good morning. Then just wait for them, the return back, they will tell you good morning. Then you can continue. The first thing should be the introduction only, always uh, introduce yourself, then go to the next conversation. So you can just like this, good morning, they will tell you good morning. Uh, I'm Rishmi Rajan, one of the registered nurses from your commu local community area <clears throat> then you can ask if i am not wrong is it mr john's house so what you have to do during three minute preparation time you have to ask patient's name in case of home visit okay then is it mr john's house if i am not wrong uh, is it mr john's house then they are telling that yes it is then you have to do ask am i talking to the right person then they are telling yes i am mr john jo like johnson or john then the next thing should be your Purpose and permission to talk. This should be together. Purpose of the visit plus your permission to continue the conversation. Example, you can tell that. Um, uh, glad to see Mr. John. Actually, I came here um, uh, to know about your <coughs> post-operative period. Is it the right time to talk with you? That means your purpose plus the uh, permission to continue your conversation. That question may tell that. As of course, you can come inside. Thank you. Then you can continue with the task. So this is the peculiar introduction for home visit and at the end of the home visit uh, of course if, if it is like a continuation of care means you can tell that thank you for your time which you spend with me and uh, meanwhile if you need any assistance you uh, please do not hesitate to contact with us we are there to help you that's enough an example if you went there for um, any vaccinations or any injections it is like a single home visit you will not continue with any any more miss you can just sum up that uh, thank you for your time which you spend with me uh, have a nice day. That's enough. Okay, so you can sum up. In that homicide itself, there will be non-scenario. That means you have just examined patient. They are actually the same thing only. There is no need for the introduction. You can just ask the patient's name during three minute preparation time and you can just straightly you can ask example patient's name is George. Miss well, Mr. George, thank you for allowing me to examine or something. Then you can start with the conversation. Con conclusion will be same thing only. So only one thing you have to uh, take care whether it is non scenario or it is a unknown scenario. So these are all the common uh, talk another one more thing it is emergency department so in emergency department it is like a panic situation it's like emergency cases only so no need for uh, like a elaborate interaction you can just um, in you, there also you have to uh, uh, take care whether it is non-scenario or unknown scenario if it is you have just examined this it is non-scenario you can just ask their name during treatment preparation time and during the conversation you can just start with well miss mary maria thank you for allowing that that thing will go and if it is unknown scenario means you can just um, uh, self introduction greeting greeting self introduction then it will continue like uh, good morning uh, my name is rashmi rajan i am the uh, emergency nurse for you today that's enough then you can continue how may i address you and how can i help you today then you will continue with the other tasks. So these are all the important ta task or role play cards which will appear for all exam. That means community health center, 
then hospital scenario hospital ward emergency department and home visit so in that um, uh, clinic also can come it will be same like a community health center a different uh, variety of clinics are there so in that clinics uh, they will come to get some information regarding the procedure so that procedure is important one question will be related to any procedure so you have to um, uh, explain the procedure and uh, the indication, contraindication, and the side effects. Exactly what is uh, what is the procedure involves and aftercare, the discharge. So all these will come. In that, uh, just uh, keep it in your mind. There are two words. That is uh, resist and warn. If you see these two words, keep it in your mind. Don't forget to ask. Do you have any concern before that task? Okay, warn means what? You are warning not to do or don't do. These uh, things only will come. But don't use that word. These things only you are warning uh, to stop something. Not to continue like that. Resist means once you are telling no, I could not. So that is the meaning. In these two situations, if you didn't ask any question, means we could not uh, complete that task. So you have to ask, do you have any concern? That patient will ask you something. Then you are giving the warning. How you have to give the warning? Don't tell that don't don't use okay don't um you should not you have you should not you never do not like that in simple way we can tell that um mr john uh, i can truly understand your concern but really um really i am not the right person to explain you regarding this one but no need to worry doctor will help you with that so this is the thing for uh, like a warning or resist example resist example they are asking about the uh, pain medication they are uh, the patient is asking this i am not getting any uh, pay, uh, any relief in my on my i mean in my pain so could you please tell could you please administer me any strong um, uh, painkillers then we can tell that uh, oh, i'm sorry to know that you are in severe pain mr john uh, but really i'm sorry to inform you that i am not a right person to um, prescribe any medications but no need to worry i will inform your doctor let him examine you and he will uh, prescribe uh, the strong painkillers so I can administer you so that is the way then one one means just you can tell that don't use don't do like that example you can ask something do you have any other concern then patient is asking that um, sister me I um, is it okay to continue with the swimming if I have ear infection then we have to tell that it's not advisable then how we can tell uh, so john i can truly understand your concern but i am strongly recommending you to avoid swimming okay it is strongly advisable and it is uh, uh, like highly recommended and uh, please try to avoid swimming in that uh, way we can express our warning like uh, it is essential for you to avoid it is important for you to avoid it is vital for you to avoid it is advisable for you to avoid or i'm strongly recommending you to avoid these all phrases you can use for one that means you are warning them not to do so don't use you are you are not uh, you can use even you are not supposed to do that one also it's okay but don't try to use the word don't do you have not uh, these things and all it is like a demanding uh, sentences so you, you cannot use in that OET role play because you can use but if you are using like uh, the presentation will be demanding so there is a less chance to get B score so these are the scenarios will come for your exam of course and the first role play will be somewhat small like home visit or a community health center or clinic or something like that so you will get enough time uh, but the second role play will be uh, some large content. You can see the task plus subtask will be there. So what you can do uh, during a treatment preparation time, whatever things you are asking, maybe patient name or baby's name, whatever, you can just write it on the paper. And uh, introduction also, you have just examined if it is written there, means just underline, 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 don't forget. Because you will prepare nicely, but when you will start your conversation, you will forget. Then again, you will start with the normal role play so that is a thing mostly all students used to have uh, this mistake that's why i'm telling you to underline a problem you can underline that paper if you have doubt you can ask to the interlocutor before starting may ma'am may, may i use this paper may, whether they can uh, write something over there you can just ask them and confirm them and you can make use then um, important thing don't underline all things like important things like word uh, like um, explain what is the content to explain one means what is the thing you have to earn. Resist means what is that verb resisting. And you can see that in second role play and all you can have more subtask. So you will get confusion. 
because you are um, uh, you are maintaining eye contact with the interlocutor so what you can do each uh, important thing you can underline whenever you will do once if you finish your subtask you can just put tick mark in the side left side in the subtask not in the main task also so that it will be easy for you to confirm yourself that how many topics you have finished and how many is remaining sometimes your interlocutor may ask you without order so you will get confusion from where i have to restart so that's that thing will come and sometimes if they are asking something means don't leave it what is their question you have to answer first then you have to go into your track so these are the things if you keep it in your mind um, the speaking will be very easy and easily you can get b score and uh, maintain your politeness always maintain your uh, politeness and respect then uh, the flow there should not be any gap so what you have to do in three minutes preparation time you have to read thoroughly and underline the things then uh, when you are uh, when you are uh, um, doing the conversation just you can uh, and, uh, put tick mark in the side which one you finish you have finished already then uh, the another important thing it is that uh, warm up questions actually warm up question uh, nothing to be worried they will ask you maybe four or five questions so if you if you want to get um, some questions i will uh, keep the uh, link in the description box you can uh, you can see you can write and practice and uh, always just to try to practice by yourself or record or something keep it with you then before going to the exam just um, have a a uh, quick look over your uh, uh, speaking notes maybe you will write something like warm up or uh, some uh, what you call the connectives especially you maybe you will use the connectives sympathetic words and all so for sympathy i can tell you that always you can uh, so what is the problem is uh, students they have uh, they know they know how to or um, what to tell in that situation but a sound modulation will not come so most of the students they have these issues but um, just try in that way example be patient is telling that sister i have severe pain over my leg i can't move at all so what you have to tell as a nurse example patient's name is george oh mr george i am really sorry to hear about your pain but no need to worry i am here to help you this thing it will not be there in your role play card but you have to tell by yourself so this is the way how we will impress the um, yeah, like um, it evaluate so this is like a tricky only but if you follow all these measures it will be easy for you to get the base score i know one more thing it is that patient is like um, especially to the parents and daughter and son of a, a sick uh, parent in that situations also you have to be more uh, sensitive like sympathetically you have to talk like reassurance should be there uh, don't see the reassurance in your paper only those area you should not use the reassurance reassurance can be any time like in the introduction at the end or if they are telling something um, like um, emotionally if they are expressing some some concern means you, you can tell no need to worry mr um, uh, george or calvin or johnson we are here to help you no need to worry we can move with that so like that you can give the reassurance and the connective which one you are using the last also should not be repeatedly are you getting my point is it clear for you am i clear to you do you have any concern then how does that sound but how does that sound you should not you, you could not use in everywhere example if you are giving some advices you can ask how does that sound how you are feeling about that do you think you can do that this all meaning same same thing only and at the end always ask them everything is everything clear for you or do you have any more concern to be clarified so that should be there then only you have to conclude your role play so second role play you can be you you have to be some more faster than the first role play because you can see the question paper the content will be some more so you have to maintain the speed so if you follow all these measures of course you can get b score very really easily i hope this video is helpful for you please follow all these um, advices and um, i wish you a very best of luck for your exam don't be panic so i can tell you that everybody will become panic during the exam but don't show it outside because if you panic your sound will show that you have uh, some low confidence so don't show outside just imagine that this is patient they don't know anything regarding medically you are the medical person so you can talk whatever you will talk they will not resist you they will just tell s yes. okay so that's enough so we will see with another one informative video until then bye take care